it's it's something that uh, I've always wanted to do. Uh, you remember in 2003 I ran for council position as executive mayor. There were problems uh, in 2003. Violence was the major problem. And we could specifically say who was violent and who did what, but there was destruction of property. Uh, the world counting process was not was very opaque. Um, it, it was it was uh, staffed with uh, Zanopia functionaries. Uh, there was no democracy at all in that process in 2003. But that's history now. It's, it's over and done with. All I'm saying is I've always considered local government uh, to be an extremely important arm uh, of uh, governance in Zimbabwe, uh, which needs. Uh, all our input, all our muscle and brains. So, and I'm glad that uh, the citizens have chosen me to represent them in Ward 10. And we hope we'll make a difference uh, in Kwekwe. When I started, it was really because of my discontent with the way ZANU PF was doing things. Uh, it was after some act of very serious violence perpetrated against my family by ZANU PF. Uh, that's what nudged us on. Yes, there were a lot of economic factors, the misgovernance, you know, lack of rule of law, and so forth. But it was the violence that was the final straw that broke the camel's back. And we never turned back after uh, that time in 2003 when I contested uh, for the position of executive mayor. And we continued with activism in the in the opposition movement for democratic change with President uh, Changirai. Uh, until now, uh, we haven't deviated, we haven't turned back, we haven't, we haven't changed our stance. We are still with President Nelson Chamisa as the citizens' movement. So, yeah, we need more professionals, we need more uh, people of faith in, in governance. We cannot just be complaining that uh, our government is ineffective, it's corrupt, it's evil, uh, they can't deliver. When we don't come up to offer our services uh, to the nation, uh, if you put people who are incompetent, they'll just give you incompetences in output. Uh, and so I don't think anybody who is not participating uh, in, in this electoral process has got any moral standing to actually complain about what they get uh, eventually uh, is the governance and the economic situation in the country. You can't complain. Why are you not putting your weight into it as a professional, as someone who is capable? Well, talking about faith, the Bible specifically says when good people rule, the people rejoice. But when the evil and corrupt people rule, the people groan and mourn, they cry. We as citizens have an obligation to put good people, God-fearing people into office so that we can rejoice and enjoy uh, the milk and honey in Zimbabwe. This is really a, a land of milk and honey. But if you, if you put the corrupt people by the cookie jar, they'll finish. You'll get nothing and you'll be groaning and mourning. You say we're professionals. But for you to operate as a professional and make good profit and, and, and have a good uh, career, you need good governance. The ambient environment around your business must be good, corrupt free, the economy must be ticking well and so forth. So um, th that is really the, the push factor for, for, for me. I, I want to see good governance. I want to give it my best. Uh, and when one day I'm late to rest, hopefully as an old man, uh, I would like people to say, he, he did this bit, he was corruption free, he worked hard, uh, he improved our lives. We want testimonies, and those testimonies can only come if we are God-fearing people uh, who, who run the nation well. I think the experiences I got as Minister of Health uh, will prove extremely beneficial to the people of Zimbabwe if I'm working as a counselor and bringing down, distilling all the experiences into local governance because that's where the people are, okay? Healthcare delivery is done by council. 
all the councils. They run clinics, they run hospitals, they run the public health uh, uh, system uh, at local authority level. And that's where the people are. It's not the job of central government. When you see cholera breaking out in Harare or Kwepe or any other city, it is the job of the local government. So I can't understand anybody who can't see why it's advantageous for somebody who has handled a cholera situation before to be now in local government and, and start dealing with the same issues at local government level where the people actually are. I can understand that. We got problems with water supply, we got problems with issues of uh, sanitation, we got we got sewage flowing all over Kwekwe, you know. I don't understand why we've never repaired. There are certain hotspots, three or four of them, and the to me the most important one is right there by Manunure there. Why why do we for the last ten years we've had sewage flowing by Manunure? Why? Can we not repair those pipes or do something? It's something that uh, needs people who've got a heart for water and sanitation issues, who understand health, who think health is important. In fact, health is the most important asset to a human being. Without it, it doesn't matter how educated you are, you will die with your education, you will die with your money. We've seen rich people dying uh, because of simple things, uh, public health issues that have not been handled properly. So I think uh, this, this council, uh, position, I want to insist, is actually higher, it's a promotion, it's higher than being a senator and sitting in that, in that august house and just pontificating there, making contributions. Yes, parliament makes laws, then what? They don't enforce anything. They don't make people's lives better. But now, when you're at a local government level, you are now the implementing partner for those who make the laws. So I think it's a, it's a more important job, really, to implement the laws properly and make you know, health care better, the roads better, reduce uh, all these issues of uh, 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 drug addiction, the drug problem in Zimbabwe. Local authorities have a lot to do with it. Why do we not have recreational centers now? During Ian Smith's time, I grew up in Rimoka. We had the recreational centers. I used to play basketball. And we, now I passed by Rimoka there, the basketball court has got potholes. How do you play basketball when there are potholes? Uh, we are not giving it our best. Now, I'm not saying I'm the answer to everything. I'm saying I want to contribute. I want to do my best, okay? And if everyone does their best, we'll have better cities. The challenge is in Ward 10. The major challenge, I think, is uh, water supply. Uh, that's the thing that Ward 10 residents are always complaining about, water supply, water supply. We need to improve on that. We need to make sure that uh, there is a free flow of water. There are citizens just like anybody else uh, who lives in Bizo or Ramaven. So real effort to improve the road, the road situation. Um, street lighting is also a challenge. We have too many dark spots at night. And um, that, that sort of breeds crime. We have had a few robberies, a few muggings, uh, which is very nasty. There are, there are certain black spots that are not. We've got to improve all that. Uh, but as you'll appreciate, what 10, you know, a lot of the people have their own things, their own houses, and so forth. Uh, but we've got to improve the public utilities. This is one thing that we need to unpack. The ZANU PF government is just a government of cheats. What they want is to, to run down the councils and attempt to prove that opposition councillors cannot run councils. I'll mention a few of the things they did to destroy local authorities, to punish people in cities for voting for the opposition. Number one, they took away all revenue sources. 
okay? When I was growing up, when I took my driver's license in the 80s, I knew that I would go to the council to pay for my license disc. That money went to council. It went, you know, into road repairs and other things that have to do with, with council work in a local authority. And I remember particularly on that form, the question that was there was, where do you ordinarily park your car at night? And if you say Kwekwe City, that's where you went to pay your, your taxes, your road taxes. They've taken that away, it has gone to Znara. They always promise we'll give you some of the money, they, they don't give you anything. We can't repair roads in the cities because the revenue source has been taken away. Um, they, 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 they created Zinwa. Zinwa took away some of uh, the revenue, the water revenues from local authorities. Um, and, and we could go on and on. There are many revenue sources that council has lost to local to, to, to central government. Um, and then they expect. The other thing is the, the minister has been given powers and authorities to veto uh, council. If you want to employ, like, say, a town clerk in a city, you don't even know the amount of interference you get from, uh, from the minister of local government. They give you somebody they want not on the basis of competence, but on the basis of patronage. They put someone they want there who will dance to their tune. The amount of corruption that is there in local authority is driven by ZANU PF. It's, 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 when our people go into council, they are not inherently corrupt. But the functionaries there are told to corrupt these people. It's an equalization agenda, corrupt them. And so our people end up corrupted without knowing. Some of them don't even know. I mean, if an official came and told you, you, you are entitled to three stands and will give you, and they don't even give you the stands, you know, in the normal, ordinary, legal way, they do a lot of shenanigans. By the time you discover it, oh, poor councillor, this is your first time to be a councillor, you are in trouble with the law. Those things are driven by Zanopia. It's an equalization agenda. They want to say, ah, they are just as corrupt as us. So why do you vote for them? But we are fixing that. President Chamisa is very clear on how to deal with corruption. We are fixing that and we will fix it. We will make sure that we educate our people on uh, the procedures and what their entitlements are and what they are not entitled to, what they can do and what they can't do, what the law says. Uh, we need to, to, to give that education to our people. And I know, I'm confident that our people will uh, uh, deliver. This thing is the Zanopiev government refused the devolution agenda. They didn't implement devolution as it was in the constitution that we passed. They, 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 they've completely refused to let go of power because they, they, they know that the opposition will outperform them at local government level. The minister was Ignatius Chombo throughout that period of the inclusive government. probably the headquarters of corruption. You remember when he was, his divorce was going through, he, how many stands he had? How do you get so many stands? One person. Ah, are there no other people in the world who want those stands also? So that divorce exposed a lot of the corruption, but we knew it was there. Cecil Shizai was deputy minister, but he had no authority. You know, as a deputy minister, you really do not have authority to run the ministry. Even if your minister goes away on duty to Geneva or New York, another minister is appointed uh, to run your ministry. Deputy minister does not act minister. So we never had opportunity to act minister uh, during the inclusive government. The third thing is laws have changed a lot even after the, the, the inclusive government. They keep strengthening their position as central government and they keep taking away powers from uh, the local authorities, uh, and that's pathetic. The way to run a government is to allow the local people who know their own problems in their local area to run their own budget, run their own affairs without interference, and report, of course, to central government. The executive mayorship was a brilliant idea, and that's the way to go. And I'm, I'm confident that uh, 
if President Chamisa goes into office, executive mayors will come back. The reason why executive mayors were scrapped was that the opposition councils were taken all urban councils. And the son was not amused by that. The executive mayor had, had, had power and authority to run the council, and we were outperforming Zanukia in the councils that we were running. Oh, we had good mayors. I mean, remember when Assessor of Zain, Gueru, Anaka Guraba, Zain Mutare, and so forth. Lawai was our machine, they were doing very well. So they wanted to run down this system because they said, now we, 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 the, the opposition is now running the country because if they are running all the cities, they are running the country virtually. So they, they scraped that. You remember how they persecuted Mutsuri in Harare? So, yeah, that was a step backwards. In fact, many steps backwards. I mean the scraping of the executive mayors. It was a ZANU-PF agenda, a very evil agenda. And we should really go back to executive mayors in order to ensure proper running of local authorities. I think the, problem, the, the solution is just to be firm and fair in everything we do within the confines of the law. The law is a serious constraint at the moment. As I said, we've got an overbearing minister. I don't just mean the, the current minister who is there, I mean the whole system, the law. It doesn't matter who the candidate is, the ZANU PF candidate who is minister of a local government. They, they will all behave the same because of the prevailing law. Uh, we, we, within those confines, we still have to, to deliver. The mayor, the councillors have rights. Nothing will be done without council resolution. The thing is just to be firm and fair. If the minister wants to eject council agenda, well, let the courts decide. It's not easy as councillors to oppose central government. But we're saying we want to up the gear now. We want to up the gear. We must look at areas in which uh, we can actually insist on proper governance within the council in spite of what the minister thinks and says. Um, I don't want to say the, the current uh, crop of councillors were not insisting, no. Zanu was using a lot of uh, shenanigans to corrupt our councillors and to make them ineffective. Remember, once they corrupt you, you can't be effective. Yeah. You become a puppet. They use that as their ticket to controlling uh, councillors. But we, we've got to try. We've got to try with our people. We'll have a whole new crop of councillors, a whole new era, and hopefully we'll have our own president. Uh, we are very confident that uh, Chamisa will be president in the next government. And yeah. these things will be different. You know, councillors, local authority is just like central government. Central government runs the whole country. Local authority runs a municipal area. Or a rural district council, if it's rural. But here we are talking about a city. Everything to do with the running of the city is on the shoulders of the council. They have their own parliament, which is the council. It makes laws, they make resolutions, Together you decide, we, we, we now want to spend $2 million on building roads. Which road shall we build first? How much shall we spend on this road? Those are all day-to-day -day decisions of managing. They make resolutions. And then the executive of the council, they must implement those resolutions. So we see, you know, central government interfering at the level of making the resolutions and also at implementation level. You see them interfering with the tender system uh, and so forth, imposing people uh, and so corruptly imposing people to you know to take over certain tenders and so forth. We see we see budgets being uh, uh, vandalized by corruption. Uh, people who are not fit to do certain jobs being given contracts to do the jobs. So the it's a way of siphoning money out of council. Uh, 
and those are the things we want to bring an end to. And finally, the most important question, why should people in Wadite vote for you? Very interesting question. First of all, I think I am able to deliver as a council of what uh, yeah, I have the experience uh, that is required. I've uh, even worked at central government level. Uh, I have a good idea of how to run a healthcare system. I have a good idea of the issues in, of water and sanitation and education. These are the, and eventually die at a ripe old age. Uh, so those are the social, so I, I'm, I'm quite confident uh, with all the issues to do with the social determinants of health and the things that will make people prosperous, healthy, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, and I think uh, I'm a good pick for that job. I don't believe demonizing other people brings the best out of us. Uh, I think we should talk about what we can do things that God has gifted us with. Um, and if I think I'm a better candidate, I should say so. Uh, but not, uh, not to demonize other people. I don't think God is very happy. Once you start demonizing other people, uh, it doesn't matter who you believe in. Uh, to me, God is not happy uh, with that. And uh, you will not get the blessing. You need the blessing of the people. You need the blessing of God in order to succeed in life. Well, I'm contesting against him, yes, and I want to win, and I'm, I, I, I hope the people will give me their vote. But he's not my enemy. Even after walloping him, I'll still go and say, Master, thank you very much. This was a good contestation. It's like a football match. You don't start fighting the other team physically or, 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 or demonizing them verbally. No. You, you play fair after winning. You say, thank you very much. That was... It was nice. You were strong here and there and there, but thank God I beat you. So I take the position now. And Wish you well for you. next time. Same thing. Same thing. I still go and shake his hand. Thank you. That was a fair match. You beat me to it. Fine. Well, I want to tell the people of Kwekwe and Zimbabwe that this is time for change. We've been going round and round in this wilderness of poverty, corruption, hatred, violence, for too long, 43 years is far too long. We've wasted a whole lifetime for some people. We need to, to, to start writing on a very clean slate. We need to start a new life. Things will change once we vote in the Triple C. Right from the president, Jamisa the our MPs, with Judy uh, Tobaiwa here in Pepe. And then the councillors with Henry Mazzorera in Ward 10, all the other country. We must vote for that whole chain. And things will change. Change does, is not wishful thinking. Change will come when we take positive action uh, to bring about change. Uh, it must be intentional. Change doesn't just come because you, you, you slept and you woke up. No, change comes intentionally. We must all go to vote and vote the right people into office, remove the people who have run down this country for the last 43 years. That's what we need on a wholesale scale. We need to remove Zanupia from all positions in the country. Let them get zero in this election. Then lives will change. Let's not be selfish. There are people who are benefiting from the regime through corrupt means and so forth. And, and they think, Eventually, there will be nothing to benefit from because you run down the system so badly that even the thief will have nothing to steal. We don't want to get uh, to that position.